Maybe I'm crazy, but I am 100% for saving the aliens from Area 51. Ooh, saving them? Yes. Is, is that, was that what the We're going to rescue them. Well, not, the, not yes. we. Not we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, People I'm, I might who do, I support I might are going to rescue the aliens. Shut Soon. Up. Yeah, we're, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Welcome to Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. That's Brandon Newman. Hola. We believe in aliens. Yes. What um, shirt are you wearing today? A little Snoop Doggy Dog, actually. Ooh, the dog pound. Okay. Snoop, stay relevant, boy. Um, uh, you coaching I'm, I'm linebacker, football linebackers coach. football, football state? I'm in, I'm in a football state of mind. I'm, I it see is. The, football field. It's, it's coming back. You can't smell the grass, but you can think about it yeah. at this point in time. We are. We're right in that you know very I mean? specific transitional period. Yes. Camps start in, what, two weeks? Uh, Yeah, they report on the... 28th, I believe. Yeah, so we're, we're right there. We can see it on the horizon, yes, just yes. The, the, the very edge mm-hmm. of the ball, the laces, mm-hmm. if you will, peeking Woo. out over the horizon. So we are going to have TJ, TJ Hushmanzada on the show today hey. to talk about some of that um, upcoming football uh, ness. ness. Um, <laughs> and we're talking to him about the NBA, too. Yes. Um, get some of that in as well mm-hmm. and, uh, and find out uh, how millennial he is. Maybe we'll ask him Ooh, some millennial questions, too. I like that. We're also going to talk about the big move, Russell Westbrook teaming up with James Harden. We haven't yes. discussed that yet. Mm-hmm. Super duper duper early MVP combo mm. for the NBA. Um, Zeke's got some stuff going on with the Cowboys. With lots of you thoughts do. on uh, LeBron and AD. They're not They're not switching jerseys. That's actually not happening. Switch your mind. Um, have some thoughts on the Sixers. Ben yep. Simmons just got paid. Um, as we discussed, the Aliens. Also, anonymous GMs from the um, uh, NBA are, are sharing their thoughts on on players that they will never have on their teams, clearly. They love it. Um, based off of their quotes. Uh, Culture Report, Finish Stranger Things. Yes. Big thoughts. Yes. Big thoughts. Big, big wild uh, finale of this season. Mm-hmm. Um, big 007 James Bond updates. Yes. And, um, you know, they're, they're coming for the millennials again. And um, we're here. We're here to take you know, the we're, Yeah. We, I mean, we always do. We, yeah, have to, we have take for. the blame for everything. For you know, this. we're lazy. Right. You know, we were ruining the environment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We demand equal pay. Right. Uh, it was like all these evil things. Um, Don't remember phone numbers. Yeah. I mean, was, oh, always on our phones. <laughs> like we invented them or something. Um, anyway, so let's get started with TJ Hushmanzada. All right, TJ Hushmanzada, thanks hey. for joining us again. We appreciate it. We were just talking about um, Old Town Road. Because yeah. did you hear the remix? Oh, the I remix did not. for the remix. No. Oh, there's, yeah. There's a, well, yes. Exactly. I should. Yes. Yeah, I should say appropriately. The remix to the remix. Right. To, yeah. They put the little, Billy Ray Cyrus was the remix, and then yeah. Right. They put Young Thug and uh, Mason Ramsey. You know, he was a yodeler, yeah, yeah. little, little yeah. Walmart guy. He went and came in and killed it. So I'm gonna. I'll yeah. He came in and killed it. Yeah. In, I'll give you the timestamp so you can skip. Are all the lyrics <laughs> different? Uh, they should be, but they're not. No. no they're okay, not. so all right, so this song, like, well, it's really actually very relevant to sports because when this song really started hitting mm-hmm. was during the college football playoffs, and yes. it was in every locker yeah. room. Like, guys were going crazy, and now it's taken over the entire world and all of our lives. And if you have children, then you know this is the song. This and Sunflower yeah. by Post Malone, thanks to Spider Man, oh, are so the cr- kids' number one songs in life. Yeah, you yeah. Have children. Well, Earl has two children. And, Man, and my kids, this is... They, they, not no nine lie. and four. This song... And Sunflower. Yeah. My, my son, turn the song on, Sunflower. I'm like, huh? Oh, did you see how he just looked at me? This, the, these are the kids' songs. <laughs> yes. Like, we get in the car, <laughs> and those are the two songs. Yes. They can't run out summer, though. Kids can't run the summer. They run no, it. No, they do. They run everything. When you have kids, what are you talking about? You, gonna see you don't make decisions <laughs> anymore. Run the summer, run the <laughs> life. Run life. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no. Um, that and Juju on that beat is, is oh, his jam. Yeah, but that's oh, like yeah. a throwback jam for him. Yeah, yeah, so he yeah. starts with Old Town Road, and then it is Sunflower, and yes. then he'll ask for Juju on that beat. And he knows every word to all of them. But yeah, so Old Town Road is like, it's taken over the entire world. And so now you were talking about the lyrics when you really, we've listened to it so much that you actually start to break down the lyrics, which I feel like is dangerous because, uh, you know, we had some songs growing up that were not really appropriate. True, true that, true that. You know, I, I like, broke down Usher's my, first hit and I was like, one of my favorite songs okay, as, as, nice a, as a very young child, as, as being raised on Whitney Houston was Queen of the Night. Not an appropriate song for a young child. No, 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 no. Peaches and Cream was my brother's favorite song yeah, growing nope, up. Yeah, not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, right. just, yeah, that's a movie Um Okay, so we were talking, <laughs> the Madden Ray Ratings came out. Very easy transition. Yes. Um, the Madden ra- ratings came out. You told a story on the herd earlier. Players really actually care about Madden ratings, right? One hundred percent. Do you yeah. you actually forced your way into a higher Madden rating? Yeah, I was Ooh. mad. Like the it came out one year, and I don't know what I was ranked, but I thought I should have been ranked higher. 
and I said something in the interview and they ranked me higher. How much higher? Like significantly or like enough that you felt I like... I might have been like 90 and I went to like a 93 or 94. That's a big jump. And so, but it was rightfully so. It was guys that were, they weren't better than me. And they were higher. It was a lot of guys that weren't better than me that was always ranked Who higher. Who was in particular? That I don't like... remember exactly. But by this time, I had been playing well. Right. So I'm like, y'all, re it's really a respect thing more so than anything oh, else. Like you really got this dude rated higher than me? Y'all mm -hmm. tripping. So do you think that it is disrespectful to the other receivers in the league that DeAndre Hopkins is 99? Yeah. But I will say this. But is, my, he, is he a 99? If he's a 99, Julio Jones is a 99 as well. Easy. So and Julio can go on, too. So to me, Julio Jones is the best receiver in the league. And then it's DeAndre Hopkins, to mm. me. Well, and Julio so Jones I can't, is a 98. I, so... I can't argue. Both, if I'm DeAndre Hopkins, I like my 99. Of course. <laughs> but right. if I'm Julio Jones and I got a 98, I might not like that I'm not a 99, but I'm cool with a 98. Yeah, you cool. I'm cool, yeah, but yeah. I think DeAndre Hopkins is the second best receiver in the league, so I'm okay with that. Okay, okay. so you, all right, so do you have DeAndre Hopkins above Antonio Brown? Or I do. You, have, you do, why? Just because Antonio Brown has played with Ben Roethlisberger his entire career. Mm. And he's, I'm, Ben Roethlisberger is as many faults as he has. Uh, Antonio Brown gonna see like, oh man, I divorced my wife and I can't even get her back now. Mm. He gonna see. Well, the Raiders are gonna be interesting. I think we're all gonna see what's he gonna is, with the Raiders. And, and that, that's why I put Hopkins ahead of uh, Antonio, just because Hopkins' quarterback is better in Watson than Browns is in Carr. Okay. Okay, I could see I like that. that. Okay, Do you yeah. think that Aaron Rodgers is being disrespected because he has six guys yeah, ahead very of him? Much now, so. very good guys ahead of him. It's right. not like there's any busters above him, but they gave him a rating of 90. Yeah, he sh he should be rated higher. He should at worst be the third guy on there. But so it goes Mahomes, Brady, Philip Rivers, Drew Brees, Andrew Locke, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I would So who Rod would you move him above? All of them except for Brady and Mahomes. And Mahomes is huh? They they based this off of what happened last year. Right, right, right. Yeah, but I'm a receiver. True. You say okay. who who do I want me throwing the ball? Right. I ain't getting down the field like Mahomes likes to do it. So I don't even want Mahomes. Right. But I, I would take Brady. You're not trying to run like that. Yeah, I'm not getting down the field <laughs> like that. So that first round. Hey, he, he, he ain't <laughs> on that first one. I'm I not vibing option. with Mahomes. <laughs> But he's good. Right. But I'm taking Brady. I'll take Phillip Rivers. I'll take I'll take all these quarterbacks. But will I take them over Aaron Rodgers? Nah, maybe the only guy is Brady. If you twist more, we can argue Breeze. But Aaron that, Rodgers, from the sack, Breeze? he literally is out the game. He, he's, he gets sacked and he is done for a week or two. Aaron Rodgers. Durability don't got nothing to do with it. I mean, we're stretching that a little bit, right? That's fair. Just, but no, no. I mean, if durability has something to do with it, then why is Andrew Luck on there? Mm. Okay. So um, Aaron Rodgers, just a natural thrower of the ball. There's nobody better. It's okay. him and then pro probably Matthew Stafford as far as natural thrower of the ball. Oh, that's another bad one. I'm just telling yeah, you. TJ, what are yeah. you talking about? Joy. Okay, well, so, all so, right. So, Golden you, Tate said. You live well, out here. You brought up I'm Matthew a, Stafford. I didn't I no. didn't summon that name. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're going to have to explain yes. yourself. And so, there's a lot of animosity between those two. It has to be. Everybody knows why. Okay, right. so, we'll tell and the story so, real quick. We'll, Golden Tate, he said that Matthew Stafford basically, he basically said Matthew Stafford is the best quarterback he's played with. Right. He played with Russell Wilson. So, right. Shouts uh, out Golden Tate. Notre Dame. Uh, yeah, you know boy. him. Okay, so um, you can maybe ask him to explain Tate himself. Here. So get the real story. And well, so, yeah, do he'll your tell job. You, you know, he probably already knows. But that's what do you another, mean you that's know? another tell story. Tell the story. That's another. You, you can't tell that. You find ways you to can't talk about open cases. This is yeah, you can't tell. You, say you can't part speak of the on job. You find ways to work it <laughs> yeah, into the story. Yeah, he went to Notre Dame. He can tell the story. You find <laughs> other people who had pieces of it, and then you connect the dots. True that. True that. True that. All right, go ahead. And so this is what I'll say. I've never really been around Matthew Stafford. So the last week and a half, the guys that I work with, I've actually had a chance to be around them. That boy throws the ball. Mm. Like he really, really throws the ball. Now. Is Golden Tate Hayden? Yes, he is. But when you Absolutely. Look, when you look at it, you look at Golden Tate's stats with Seattle, four years. Golden Tate's stats with Detroit, four years. He should think Matthew Stafford is better. He had damn near twice as many catches, damn near twice as many yards, yeah. and almost double the touchdowns. So if I play with Russell Wilson it, 
and I get this, no. and then I play with it Stafford, and I get that. It's different because Golden was at a different point in his career taking the number one position because Calvin had just left. Now, he got a chance to get worked into it and get all those, you know, go and eat them yak yards up. And it's the, – the problem with Detroit is they lo- they were losing so much. It's a lot of gar- garbage yards and garbage catches. Amen. But Amen. You, they, when you look at the end of the season, True. they all add up the same. And that's where the money comes from. And, and exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. Golden Tate is looking at statistically – I did well with Matthew Stafford, and I was just okay with Russell Wilson. So part of it is the truth in Golden Tate's eyes. This best part quarterback you play Okay, with. but, all right, so maybe all those things are fair, right? Not, like, just to remember what we all play for is wins, We're not right? saying Russell Wilson is a uh, – that Matthew Stafford is a superior quarterback, but in Golden Tate's eyes for his career mm-hmm. – so he did, did better with Matthew Stafford for all the reasons no you just mentioned. No comparison, way better. Okay, but do, don't you think – don't you think, like, just a little bit, and look, we all, we get it, all right? We all are on the same page. But don't you feel like Russell Wilson just gets disrespected, like, just a little bit? He does. And it, he gets disrespected because he's a black quarterback and he doesn't act the way people thinks he should act. That's just the reality of it. And I don't know True. if anybody's ever said it. This is probably the first time I've ever said it. But that's just the reality of it. It's like... He don't act the way we want him to act. Well, I don't care how he acts because I don't. Joy, I have know, no. I, it's not my problem. But is but, that why? No, I understand the perception of Russell perception, Wilson. Yes, and it's. Right. Been, I, I don't like to say that because I don't want to give people who like that. That's just that, right. That that animosity amongst us ammunition. So yeah, I, I don't want to talk about and that. I, and I'm on but, the same page. But I'm saying but that's why. But that's why he gets disrespected. Well, he, he does get disrespected. He Russell Wilson is a lot better than. What people give him credit for. He, he is. Yeah, it's just the persona. Do we need to pull up that play where he literally ran in like 15 circles? No, he's amazing. He's really good. He avoided like 10 sacks yeah. and still threw a touchdown. I'm exaggerating. But he's, he's so like, good. he's really good. No, he's so good that people forget that we're watching the NFL when you watch him play sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm you shouldn't be allowed to do that. You shouldn't I'm not be allowed. taking it that far. You shouldn't be allowed to do the things he, because that's college. You know, it's like, when they, they're like, oh, that's a college play. Russell Wilson does a great job. He makes plays out of plays that but, shouldn't but, be made. But, I mean, if, if, if I'm going to argue what you hear which we are you say <laughs> damn he does have Pete Curl he played with defensively yes he yes. played with arguably four to five <sighs> Hall of Famers who's done that yeah. okay well this year who's done that this year right. he's not gonna have that situation so mm-hmm. he will get to prove at mm-hmm. least he'll still have one on he'll, defense okay, and okay, Bobby but, Wagner but, right. but TJ though come on like Name the great, great quarterbacks who have won multiple championships that didn't have a, g- a good coach with them. Like Brady, everyone could argue mm-hmm. that, that half of this, their success is Belichick. Yeah. And I have, I think Brady's the greatest ever. Like, I don't think Belichick is there without Brady, but I also they don't think that Brady, yeah, like, I don't think, I think they go hand in hand. Like, mm-hmm. with football, that's a situation. Basketball is different. Mm-hmm. LeBron is, has never played True. with a Hall of Fame coach. True. He wins championships when the coach gets changed. That's that year. Season, right? It's less people so on the court. That's what I'm saying. It's a completely different Football comparison situation, but like yes. it's a team sport, and the coach really matters. Like, so I don't like that. Like, oh well, he has Pete Carroll. Yeah, but like, it, they need Pete Carroll, and Pete, he doesn't play both sides of the ball. They need only, a good defense. It's not only Pete Carroll. You got Richard Sherman. Man, there's a lot more. The, Cam the Chancellor, they had a great Earl team. Thomas, Michael Ben. I mean, you have. We Most Wagner, Super Bowl have, teams no, no, are great not, teams. W- how but, many Super Bowl teams have on defense mm-hmm. and for consecutive years four Hall of Famers? Not many. No. Not and when you many. have a defense like that, you can do stuff like we've seen Russell Wilson and open up the playbook on offense because you know you got that defense. So not, the variables. They're, they're giving up, I'm guessing here, add up. they're giving up less than 12, 10 to 12 points a game. I probably can play quarterback and win that game. Okay. See, like, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I said yeah. probably. We Not were, that I could. We there, probably. And then That's it, how you end all of it. Yeah. And, 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 and I can throw not, you a couple screen I passes. I am not yeah, out there going to get Pat White <laughs> in this situation. Screen passes? I can't get hit. I, there are squirrels out there? That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. That's... I, I, Actually, I would run very fast because yeah, I was yeah. not trying to get hit. Football is not the sport for me at all. Um, okay, oh, so the Cowboys have a little bit of a situation on their hands. Yes. I am very pro everybody get your money. Mm-hmm. And I think especially if you've earned it, which Dak Prescott mm-hmm. in my eyes has, um, I don't know why the Cowboys, maybe Cowboys fans, do you guys not have um, like the internet? Because if you look on the internet, you could find the record before I'm pointing at Ashley because she's a big Cowboys fan. Yes. Uh, when Tony Romo went down, how bad you were, very bad. Yes. And then Dak Prescott came in and then he saved the day, right? And then we had that whole year the where season. they were like, really, they really were thinking 
Can you remember the time when they thought they were going to take Dak Prescott out and put Tony Romo back in? I, love that. I do remember that. Yeah. Love that. When Romo crazy. got That's healthy, they were saying, right? is they he going to really be benched? About doing I remember that, that. yes. About what an insane thing to think. I remember and that. And now they think that they're not going to pay Dak Prescott. And I think that's just insane. Like, there's talk that they should just let his contract play out and just try and find someone in that's the draft. Crazy. Had they and I look, he wow. kind of hope that happens. I, I, I kind of hope it happens. I love that the Cowboys are good because they're great to talk about. Obviously, right. it's great for our business when mm-hmm. Cowboys are good. But it's so insane to me that they're not going to pay Dak that I almost hope it does happen. And then they go back to that state that they were in before when Tony Romo went down. Do you think that they should pay Dak whatever it is, that the max of whatever it is? Eventually, he's not going to be the highest paid quarterback. Like He's not going to be the highest paid quarterback for the next 15 years. That's not how the contracts work. I do believe they should pay Dak. Now, I'm not – I'm a proponent of guys getting their money. Obviously, I was a player. He should not make more than Aaron Rodgers. Mm. And, yes. and that's just the reality of it. But the Cowboys have screwed this but up. But out of principle or out of the fact that now, like, like it's going to handicap the team? Because to me, like the, the idea of like, I don't believe make in more... a handicap. They're, man, they got enough money. They can structure these contracts where they can really overload the salary in a certain year for the salary cap and then – down and then the salary cap will drop. They they can the cap number will they can figure out a way to make this work. What I'm saying is this: last this past fall, the Cowboys could have given Dak Prescott 26 million a year, and everybody would have thought, "Oh my God, they're crazy. He's overpaid." If he takes 26 million now, everybody gonna look at him and say, "Why would you do that?" Right. So number one, they've misplayed this big time. They yeah. have to pay him because mm-hmm. it's just what you just said. When Romo got hurt. Here comes Dak Prescott with the life vest and raft saving the whole team and organization. Yeah. He brought them back to relevance. You got that comes with a price tag. Yeah, it does. That come take what he's doing on the field. This is off the field. That mm. comes with a price tag. They mm. also won the division. Yeah. I said this earlier. Won a playoff game. Yeah. Finally. What do they talk about for quarterbacks? What do they want you to do as a quarterback? It's just two things. Win and lead. Mm. Dak Prescott does both of those things. Ooh. He checks both of those. He wins, and he leads the team. He does. You got to pay him. I, I, I mean, I, everything that you're saying is what I've been saying. The, the longer the, they the, wait, the more you got to pay him. Joe Flacco, Baltimore Ravens situation. Ooh, the longer, longer they wait, but it's the, the truth, longer though. They wait. It's the truth, though, and and God, it's right. Bad. He's 100 percent right. They could have figured this whole situation out before. Now all of a sudden, Carson Wentz, which by the way, and I I don't mean any disrespect to Carson Wentz because I, I do think he's a great talent. But I'm sorry, Dak has had a better career than Carson Wentz. But he this, has. Like I don't. It's. It, it's Joy, I don't you know care that you were in the MVP conversation. You weren't available, and it's not his crazy, fault that he though? got injured. But he has had two major injuries, one more, and you're freaking Sam Bradford. When you bring up, mm. when, when you bring up mm. Carson Wentz, I'm Sam Bradford. Why the Why does sports work this way? You know why that's the case. Where was he drafted? Ooh. That's why. And Dak Prescott was in the. the that's not yes. overall. That's round. Fourth right. round versus so second pick. That's why, oh, Carson Wentz, you are the second pick. We're going to pay you now. Dak Prescott, you are a fourth rounder. We're going to make you wait. We're not looking at the stats and saying, oh, they're comparable. Oh, it's where you were picked. How did we think of you yep. when you first came that's into the, the league? Matters. That's why. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you compare them side by side, it, Dak has had a better career. Like it's 100%. Not, it's, it's, not even, it's not even comparable. Yeah. Dak is, is healthy. And and Carson Wentz is great. He's a leader and he's super Would talented. Would you agree with me that the rosters are? It's not like Dak Prescott's guys around him are so much better than Philadelphia. No, no. very comparable. No, 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 no. very comparable. Very comparable. Very really very good comparable. And I team. understand he has Zeke, and that's a big part of it. And we'll talk about Zeke in a second. Mm-hmm. I understand he has Zeke, but so what? Jared Goff had Todd Gurley. Like, hello, it's a team sport. Okay. You need either a great defense right. or you need a, an explosive offense, pieces on offense. It's a team sport. You can't do everything yourself. It's not basketball. You need other, at least one other great piece on either side mm-hmm. of the ball to be successful. So I, don't, I don't care about all that. It's not like he's carrying the team. My point with Dak is it's silliness with, these, with this, oh, he can't be the highest paid quarterback. Stop getting caught up on that. The next guy that gets paid is going to be the highest paid quarterback. And then that, he's not the highest paid quarterback. And as far as the money goes, he's been on a fourth round contract for his entire career yeah. you haven't been paying him shit. no and you haven't put the pieces around him with all that extra money that you have not being tied up in him yeah. to get him to a super bowl what you, else you is know he what, supposed you to know do? what annoys me too though is how they'll say oh you have to take a discount like tom brady no we ain't talking right? about no. No, tom okay. brady when he signed his first deal he was the highest paid quarterback in the league he was a high paid quarterback in the league. Yeah, people, for, yeah. people forget about that. Oh, he might take a discount now. I forgot about it. But you're not taking no. That first time you get a crack 
at that big contract, mm -hmm. you don't take discounts. No. Yeah. You take discounts after, but, but also, not the first Tom, time. Tom no. Brady, you're absolutely right. And Tom Brady is not even a part of this conversation. But first of all, Tom like Brady the, has, oh. the, has along with him, okay, first of all, he had, he had huge success at the, very early in his career, A. B, he is alongside arguably the greatest coach in NFL history. It's very easy to take a discount when you're in that situation because you know that coach, you can trust that he's going to put the pieces around you to get you to another Super Bowl. We're not taking Super discounts Bowl. in our okay? 20s. We're not taking discounts mm, in our 20s, our 20s. And we're not mm. taking a discount with Jason Garrett. No offense, okay? <laughs> and lastly, which we are going to mention because it's important, he's married to Giselle Bunchen is worth $100 million. That's not his friend. Hey, you know what okay, they're never married. <laughs> You, you know what people never Equally bring up? Equally yoked. People That's never true. bring this up. I haven't heard this on oh, TV, man. radio, podcast. Where is Tom Brady's TB12 facility at? I don't know. It's on a... Area 51? No, no, no. <laughs> Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, like, what, Patriot Place? Yeah. It's in that property. Oh, okay. What What you think he acquired that at? You think he paid full no. asking price real estate value for that? No, so I'll take a discount, oh and I'm going to help God. you out after football. Ain't nobody's ever brought that up. So do you think he really paid dollar it. for dollar for that property? No. no. I don't think so. No. So if you're going to give me this. I mean, we are speculating. Very much speculation. But, but what I'm saying, even if I got a small discount, I'm making so much money now off of this on the property of yeah, the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady, it's not a comparable situation. So, so yeah. no so, discounts in your 20s. Yeah, no, no. no discounts. That said, somebody who's really not trying to get a discount is Zeke. So Zeke has two years left on his deal, and he's talking about holding out going into the uh, into training camp. Right. I don't I don't understand it, I, especially considering the fact that he once again had an incident <laughs> off the field, which I don't care about. And I know I do not care about guys getting in trouble off the field anymore. I will not discuss it. That is my official stance. Not during offseason? No. Like, it's not, it's not, it's no longer so discussable. So minor, though. So um, minor. Yes. Was, um, yeah. But it is Zeke, so yes. it's, mm -hmm. he already has yep. a yes. list, so it just, everything gets elevated. That said, I don't really feel like he's trustworthy off the field. Like, it, it's all, it's always something with him. And he is the number one running back in the league to me, but what are you doing holding out a training camp two years out? He's looking at it as if he's watching a lot of TV. They're going to mm. run him in the dirt, and we're going to get rid of you. Guys, let's go back to getting the field, getting trouble off the field. Just hire security, man. Pay $1,000 yeah, a night. I get it. It's cheaper than an attorney if you get in trouble. $1,000 mm. every time you go out for a really good two guys to secure you. It's cheaper than an attorney because you're going to spend thousands once you get in trouble. Why don't the Cowboys do that? So, is, how is that not a good investment for the Cowboys? Do it yourself. You, when you go out and you get a table, how much you spend to impress the women? Thousands, plural. Go get you security and spend 1000 and you you don't have those problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He navigates you through those. Number one, if Ezekiel Elliott is smart, I'm not holding out. Number one, just go there and hurt your hamstring and let them play without you. Hurt your back. You can't diagnose those things. Oh, my back hurt. Oh, we no, it hurts. My hamstring, it hurts. Can't like go. don't don't hold out because you losing money trying to get money. Mm. Yeah. I mean that's what Le'Veon should have done last year. Don't yeah. don't let that money go. Get go to practice. Up oh, my hamstring hurt. And y'all gonna pay me this? I'm gonna still get this money. I'm not gonna give up money to get money. You can, with two years. You, but you doesn't can't. that hurt? Like a lot a, of guys do that. A, a lot of guys do that. Really? A lot of guys do that where. They'll go there, and I'm hurt now. And y'all, the coaches know that you're really not hurt, but they they so get it. So it doesn't hurt you in the contract moving forward that you were injured. No, because once you start making progress on that uh, contract, I'm starting to feel a little better now. Shouts out to Kawhi Leonard. That's just the truth. <laughs> yeah, right. that, that, that that's the truth, and, and so that's what you have to do. Ezekiel Elliott, they're gonna try to run him in the ground. Mm. And give you the ball every down we can. We're going to get the fifth-year option that we already picked up. We're going to franchise you at about $12 million a year. All right, somebody else can sign you. But isn't his argument starting to get null and void? Because as these years continue, running backs become least and least relevant. And it's not as important. Running back by committee wins Super Bowls, clearly. That's true. But. Ezekiel is the best back in the game. Him and Le'Veon are the best two running backs in the game. Yeah. And you can... It's true for everybody. Probably not those two and maybe mm -hmm. Todd Gurley. But then you look at Todd Gurley's situation That's last what I'm year. He's out now. But it's 
That is true. But those guys are special. Yeah. I mean, they they can run on first down in between the tackles. They can get outside the edge. They can run away from you. Oh, I can pick the blitz up. Oh, I'll catch a pass on third down too. They can do everything. There's not many guys that can do that. It's really not. And you think it's replaceable. And then you get into a season and you say, oh, the season down the drain because we didn't want to pay this guy. Yeah. You can't do it. The Steelers stayed afloat last year. What they huh huh? The Steelers stayed afloat when when the playoffs came. Where were they at? They was. Yeah, That's not yeah. afloat. Yeah, there was okay. a Titanic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would agree with right? that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I would agree with they that. There was afloat to that hole, and then that water started coming through. <laughs> yeah. And right. quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It did. Um, all right. Well, speaking of the Steelers, let's talk about the AFC North really quickly. I I don't have good feelings about the Steelers this year. I do think they'll be better than the Browns, but I'm not. I'm not feeling the the championship run in them this year. I think that it was. I think it was a squandered opportunity to have Antonio Brown, Ben Roethlisberger, and Le'Veon Bell and not win a championship. I don't know how you do that. I think that there's plenty of blame to go around to everyone in that situation. Mm-hmm. It's not any one particular person's fault, but I think it was a breakdown in culture that caused that to happen. That said, what do you think of the AFC North? Because the Browns seem to think that they're winning a Super Bowl this year. <laughs> That's a tough division. It, it is. On paper, yeah. Well, you go with the Browns. Well, except for the Bengals. No, I'm <laughs> I'm telling you. And I, I'm not gonna really talk about the Bengals because it seems like I'm a homer. Right. But yes. if you look at their players and you look at everybody else's players, they they I match up personnel wise, personnel wise, player for player for player. Okay, but right you, there. Would you argue that that's every year though? That's like every, every year. Every that's year you every... look at the Bengals, the, okay. the roster, and you're like, okay, yeah, okay, okay. And then 2018 season started off four and one, injury, 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 injury. Mm-hmm. So that you could say that derailed their season. Right. But they started off four and one, and they had a ton of injuries. Now Zach Taylor, can he get in there? Like well, with the Browns, I'm more so. I'm sold on our personnel. I'm. Yeah. I'm not worried about Odell and Baker. Because Baker has that personality. Right. Yeah. As long as they get Odell, to, he's a receiver. If he ain't getting the ball, he's upset. That's every receiver in the league. Right. The, your favorite receiver, that's really nice. But when that camera's not around, it's cussing the coach out. Baker Mayfield can handle that. Yeah. I'm concerned more so with Freddie Kitchens. How do you go mm. from being a position coach to an interim coordinator to a head coach? He, for me, is the only question mark I have with the Browns. The players can get it done. Can he lead them the right way is my only concern. And so that division is tough. I I think the Steelers are going to take a step back. I I really do. You can't replace Antonio Brown. You can't replace Le'Veon Bell. Um, Baltimore is always going to play great defense. And I just said the Bengals, their roster is good. I'm not really going to – I'm hoping they can get out there and play. But you look at their receivers. Mm Mm-hmm. Top in the league. I'm not saying number one, but they top five. Yeah. Okay, so who who do you pick right now? Super early. Oh, if I had to pick right now, I would go with Cleveland. And the question mark is the head coach, Freddie Kitchens. I like the players. Um, no, that's, that's well, aside from the incessant losing culture that's existed in Cleveland forever. How many of those what, guys have ex- experienced that? I, no, I, that's fair. Yeah. And I do think that they are working this year to mm-hmm. erase that culture mm-hmm. from existence. They do have new players. Freddie Kitchens is my question mark too, and not, I'm not rooting against him. Like I, I want Cleveland to be successful. All of Cleveland thinks everybody hates them and like just wants them to lose, and they don't understand uh, having a, a a complete horrible team in the league is literally not good for anyone. It's not good for the league. It's not good for the players. Right. It's not good for media. Nobody wants a dud. Nobody. Right. You can't watch the game. Like that's just, nobody wants that. Just not. We don't care that much <laughs> to wish losing. They better upon go you. two and two, but, three, and, three and one in the first four, or else it's. When you, I've been on losing teams a lot, and them first four games are paramount. It's very, very important because if you go one and three, it's like, oh, here we go again. <gasps> oh my God, no, they can't go one and three. Uh-uh. And so, no, that's the they key. They got a tough schedule. You okay, have to but they cannot the go they one and three. Tough schedule. I'm not hey. worried about kids. I'm worried about that schedule. Every schedule is tough before the season start, and then you start planning. But like, oh, they weak oh, this year. Big, oh, they weak this year. Big facts, big and, and so, you got to get off to a good start because when you have a losing culture. You don't get off to a good start. Is mm-hmm. oh, it's man. this again? Here, yeah, yeah, here we go again. With them, but they because they gotta believe. They gotta believe in kitchens too. That's the only thing they they question. They in the locker room like I don't know about this dude, but we got Pittsburgh. It. They gonna play defense. Mm-hmm. Baltimore. They gonna play defense. We, for? we don't know what the Bengals gonna do. 
But we know <laughs> Baltimore and Pittsburgh are going right. to play defense. Yeah. So those division games, they're not going to be easy. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to be Bengals easy. Bengals going to beat up a bunch of teams. The Bengals have talent. They got to show me. Okay. Okay. With it. Come on. With it. What? Winning. We about to turn up in this bitch. All right, what am I winning or quitting today? The Oklahoma City Thunder have traded Russell Westbrook to the Houston Rockets for Chris Paul and some picks, reuniting former MVPs Westbrook and James Harden for the first time since 2012. The Lakers have been pretty dysfunctional lately, but joy, the Rockets are going to be the most dysfunctional team in the NBA next season. Quit it or quit it. Most dysfunctional? Dysfunctional. Um... Ooh, that's a little stumper there. Uh, I'm gonna quit it. Who? I'm gonna quit it. Who? Um, th- there's always. Well, first of all, the Lakers are going to have some issues. Like that's. Just, I mean, come on. It's, yeah, no, it's you're the right, perfect you're right. yes, setup. You're right. You're right. We can we can see it. I can play yeah, it out. Yeah. I can write it for you yes. in a script. If you what's can gonna write happen? It, it can exist. Like yes. I don't think I don't. I mean, am I ready to say this? I don't think Frank Vogel finishes the season. I, this. Oh. I don't want to get like that far into it just mm. yet. It's a little. Premature. I think the Sixers could have some issues. Mm. You know, there's right. some other teams out there. Um, that I'm going to say something very dramatic right now. Okay. All right, what, I I I am rooting for the Rockets this season. What? Are you, what? No, Joy. No, the Houston ones. You can't. How? Why? Westbrook. Oh, it always comes down to Westbrook. Here's the thing. Mm. Here's the thing. Okay. Now there's a lot. There's a lot going on here. All right. First Clearly. of all, everyone freaked out and was like, "Oh my God, James Harden, high usage rate. Russell Westbrook, high usage rate. Those Lots of things. turnovers. Mm-hmm. They actually they have so many turnovers. It's like, <laughs> like one after the other, the most turnovers ever. Triple double double. Um, but my thing is, it doesn't come down to Russell Westbrook and James Harden. Mm-hmm. Westbrook and Harden have known each other since high school. They were on the same Pangos All-American team together. They've known each other a very long time. They played three years together, including a finals in Oklahoma City. I mean, I know everyone forgets that the three of them were on a team together, Durant, yeah. Harden, and Westbrook, in Oklahoma City. It sounds crazy, because how the hell could you have Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Russell Westbrook on the same team, and now none of them, you don't have them anymore. Mm. It's not even been 10 years. They're all gone. Poof. They don't have a team anymore. To be fair, the team was in Oklahoma City. So what City. you're trying to tell me is that you drafted Kevin Durant, James Harden and Russell Westbrook, and none of them are on your team anymore, right? But, but they got picks now. Hella picks. So many right? picks. So just do that again, possibly. So many picks. So anyway, win. my point is yes. um, everyone thinks that they're not going to work together, right? Mm-hmm. I don't see it that way. I think that Russell Westbrook was never a traditional point guard to begin with. True. So the the issue is his shooting, right? Like mm-hmm. they are they shoot the most threes of any team in the league. They are uh, way into analytics, and this is not an analytics move, but it is a Daryl Morey move because he believes in getting star- the most stars. They are they were a championship level team for the past couple years. They just yeah. weren't able to get past the Warriors, mm-hmm. which. Look, all right. So you're the Raptors of the West pre Kawhi. Like that's just oh. that's just facts. That's yeah. what you are. Okay. That's what yeah. you are. You couldn't get past LeBron. Rockets couldn't get past the Warriors. That's just like they. That's how it is. But mm-hmm. the Warriors are not constructed the same way as they have been in the past. Right. So this is your year. They didn't lose any of their X factor pieces in order to get him. They they lost some picks. Which whatever. Who cares about picks? So everyone's stockpiling all these picks. Great. Do something with them. Like, I mean, they are valuable, but right. I, I would prefer to have Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is an incredible upgrade from Chris Paul. Obviously, mm. Chris Paul is a better shooter. Yes. But make Three it work. Only, when I look much. at this situation, I don't see Russell Westbrook and James Harden uh, c- clashing heads and there's too much personality in the room and Westbrook's going to want to come and take over the team. And it, it was clear that there were issues with Westbrook and the OKC situation from the very beginning. Okay. Right. And and it never worked there. It was never going to work there. It's not all on Westbrook. As I mentioned before, you had Kevin Durant and James Harden. Okay? Like, give me a break. Yeah. Westbrook can't do everything. He can't play every game, average triple-double, and put the team together. At some point or another, Sam Presti and Billy Donovan have to take some blame for what's going on in this situation. And all this talk about, like, oh, well, you know, he has all this power and control, and he makes all these decisions. Who— You got him. You drafted him. He didn't come into the league as LeBron James. You created the environment that allowed him to make all these decisions. Now you want to complain? You're the one who gave him all the power. You're the one that said that was okay. You're the one that turned the franchise over to him. At one point or another, build a culture that makes sense. 
hello, if you if they come to me here at Fox, like you get to make all the decisions. Awesome. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm not going to be like, you know what? That's yeah. very gracious. Yes. But I prefer if someone else made all the decisions for me. We don't know. Where do they do that it. at? Where do they do that at? Nowhere. That's where. It doesn't even make sense. It makes no sense. So the situation in Houston falls on one person and one person only, and that is Mike D'Antoni. Now, I made okay. it very clear. I think that his whole situation is very overrated. That's not saying that he's not a good coach. Mm-hmm. That's not saying that he hasn't had success, although ultimate success to me is measured by championships. championships so he... Debatably hasn't. He's, okay, fine. Yes. However mm-hmm. you want to look at it. But this is the year. Like, you have Russell Westbrook, who is healthy and a star. You have James Harden. You have your X-Factor pieces. The Warriors have been at least temporarily wounded. They don't have right. Clay Thompson. They don't have Kevin Durant. Yeah. This is this is the year. This is the situation. I don't want to hear about the Clippers, and I don't want to hear about LeBron. Like, you guys have been rolling like this. And you still have your main star in James Harden that you were rolling with before. So I want to see what happens. I genuinely, genuinely, I know Rockets fans have had problems with me before. But it's a new day, okay? Just like I used to get on the Raptors, and it was a new day when Kawhi got there. I think this is a great situation for Houston. I want Russell Westbrook to win a championship. Mm. And if it means James Harden's going to win a championship too, great. (laughs) So that's how I feel about it. Like I I, I want Westbrook to win a championship and I actually do want James Harden to win a championship, too, because it, it, it's so frustrating to have conversations about all-time great players and then have to end it with, but they didn't win a championship, so let's just like take all right, these things right, off right, of right, the right. off of their resume. Because right. you know they, they, were, they were tough to play with, and they, right. they weren't good locker room guys. Like If you win a championship, you can just erase all of those yeah. silly intangibles off the table. So I think it falls on D'Antoni, because whatever the system is, it gets lots of points, and everybody's stats go up and all that. That's real cute. Get yourself to the playoffs and make the adjustments that you need. And more importantly, assign appropriate roles. Westbrook is not uncoachable. He just needs to be in a situation where he feels supported and he feels listened to and he feels like he can play his game and play with people that understand how he plays, which James Harden knows because they've known each other forever. You think the two of them are just like walking in here like, it's going to be my team. No, it's going to be my team. No, it's James Harden's team. Well, the reason James Harden wanted to leave OKC in the first place is because he thought he could finally run a team. He could finally call his shots and have a team. And he was right. The Rockets are that. So to bring Westbrook back into the equation seems problematic. And the same thing you said about Frank Vogel, I think is going to happen with Mike D'Antoni. I don't see him coaching the Rockets in the playoffs at by, at the end of the day because they're not going to – if there's any static between Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and Mike D'Antoni, who's the weakest link in the equation? Mike D'Antoni, of course. Exactly. I think he's going to get plucked and get moved on out. But – this may be the first time we've seen Russell Westbrook with real shooters outside of the year of Paul George. So that's what I'm most interested in. When he drives in and kicks out, some of those people are going to make yeah, those. Yeah, and let's not forget, okay, because everyone wants to, like, pick on Westbrook's three-point average and all right. that stuff, which, oh, yeah. which is fine shoot. and fair. Especially in the free throws. Year. But he averaged a triple-double. One of those statistics is assist. He's a mm. great passer. Mm. So... There's great shooters on that team, clearly, because that's what they do. That's their whole mantra. Mm -hmm. So I do think it will work. I think it falls on D'Antoni to assign appropriate roles, to get everyone on the same page. Whether he's that guy to make that happen or not, I don't know. But to me, like, this is this is the team I'm watching and like actively rooting for to have success this particular year. I love the Clippers, too. But I I really I really do because I want to see Westbrook win a championship. I do. Yeah, and, and Clint Capella is ready to score more than Steven Adams was, and Westbrook loves passing to a center. So it, it, it'll be interesting. I, rooting for the Rockets. So you know what? It's all about growth in life. Okay. 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 Moving on. I was very right about the Raptors. I, I like this. Forget that. The last four NBA seasons have given us four different MVPs, not named LeBron James. Very sad. Steph is finally the best warrior again. Harden has Westbrook, Kawhi has Paul George, Dame has CJ, and AD has LeBron. I know it's super duper early, but Joy, with LeBron's help, Anthony Davis will win the MVP next season. Quit it or quit it? Uh, quit it. What you, what you? Uh, Anthony Davis is not going to win the MVP next season. Um, oh, yeah, I, this is super duper early. We are aware how early it is yes. because they literally gave Giannis the MVP. I think like three weeks ago. He just asked the y'all to stop calling him it though. Right, and he, but, so. right. So he has actually announced it's now time to predict next year's MVP. Right, Giannis exactly. said you, so. Giannis, yes, thank yes. you, Giannis, for the content. 
Um, Giannis is not going to win MVP next season, and it's because he plays for Milwaukee. And that's just that's the facts, and it, you can hate how that sounds, but I'm just I'm telling you how the rest of the world operates, and that's just that's not going to work. It Although doesn't. Although he just did if, for that team, right? Okay. But now we're done with we're done yes, with yes, that. Okay, okay no, we I moved agree. on. I agree. Now Giannis would have to have the greatest statistical season in the history of the NBA. They would have to lose two games the entire season in order for him to win the MVP again. Maybe <laughs> maybe they lose three and they're still on, like they might oh, give it to him. Man. He's not going to win back to back MVPs. Quit. And that's not a knock. He 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 will be better than he was this year, next year. Okay, he's he said he be. said he's only at sixty yeah, percent. But it's just be. that's just not how the MVP war, award works anymore. Right. Now, he has the best odds to win the MVP right now, followed by Steph Curry. Steph Curry is interesting because um, Colin and I were talking about today, like there's might be some sympathy mm-hmm. there for Steph Curry because he lost Kevin Durant. He doesn't mm-hmm. have Klay Thompson. And while I do think there will be a little bit of that, I also think there's a tremendous amount of Warriors fatigue. So yes. even though I think they were going to be, they're going to be a lot better than people think. I think D'Angelo Russell is huge for them, and everyone for some reason forgot D'Angelo Russell is good and functional right. now. I don't all-star. know why everyone's like yeah. trying to act like he just came from the Lakers mm-hmm. or something. He just he was in an All Star game. He just led Brooklyn yeah. to the playoffs. I don't I don't know. That's an incredible move for them. It seems like everyone's just kind of glossing over it because they think he's going to be traded. Like who cares? They're going to be great when Clay Thompson while he's gets on back, team. right? Yes. While he's there, he's yeah. going to fit right in. It's going to be fine. So uh, I, I, but I just don't see because of the Warriors' fatigue, unless Steph again has a year like Giannis that they give it to him. All right. I, I think you're right, but maybe by the end of the year, because I think the Warriors by the end of the season will start to be likable again, and then by the time we go into next yeah. year, because there was a time a few years ago when it was just the Splash Brothers and Draymond talking a little ish and. We were everyone's second favorite team. We the, I, the I, Warriors I, were everyone's second like favorite team, and I think that, I think it'll come back because they're still going to be. It's basically returned to that core. It'll be interesting to see, but I, th- I think you're right. I don't, it's, I, it's possible. It's possible that we forget the, how much everyone hated the Warriors. The, t- the tides out. And yeah, we'll come back. In. It's possible, but True. my thought on the super duper early MVP conversation mm-hmm. is, I think they give it to Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> you can't just give it to Kawhi. Well, he's got to earn it and play in the regular season to get it. Okay, so that's the pushback, right? That he's going to. I don't know how many games he's going to take off this year. Now, he took 20 off mm-hmm. last year, but he was coming off of that injury. Right. So that was kind of part of the deal. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he's going to take that many games off this year. He may just play less minutes during the regular season. Like, yeah. there are, are alternatives here. He's going to have some kind of load management, as all of the stars are going Especially to, after as the year. they should, well, because yeah. it, as we have known for quite some time now, the NBA regular season is about getting into the playoffs, and for some teams, getting good placement in the playoffs. But for most teams, right. it's just get to the playoffs, and then you figure it out, right. which is a smart way to do it because the NBA playoffs are extremely long. So the, as, yeah. as we learned with the Warriors, health is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't even feel like load management should be something that's held against you anymore. Like, it's no. it's silly. We all know how this works. Would you? I get it. Like, Giannis was available, and that's great, and he right. deserved the MVP. But I don't knock... Kawhi Leonard for managing his body. He still had an incredible season. Yeah. And I think because he didn't go to the Lakers, he's not going to have that cannibalistic effect on like the, the like like how the right. Warriors did because they all had mm-hmm. NBC M- MVP level seasons, right. but they all cannibalized each other in the MVP race. I think my pick is Kawhi Leonard at this point. I think that the Clippers are going to be the best team in the West and I think they're going to be fun to watch. I think everyone loves that he Thanos the NBA and yes. neutralized all of it so the big three eras are done for the moment mm-hmm. and he didn't go to the Lakers and form this incredibly hateable super team so I, I think that it's Kawhi Leonard at the, at the end of the year it's just too easy I I, I feel like there's going to be a lot he's of mocking he's not favored hey, I, it's, I, there's going to be a lot of mocking of what Kawhi Leonard did James Harden has better wise. odds at this point because he has someone he has someone who has Averages ten assists a game. An all star just jumping on the James team. Harden's going to have an incredible statistical season, but he's not going to be MVP. And he will. It's it's basically going to be like this: the people, the all stars who aren't looking for MVPs, they're going to play as many games as Kawhi did last year. Kawhi's probably going to sit out and chill because Kawhi, let's not forget, was injured during the playoffs and still 
carried the team the entire way. So I think a lot of people are going to try to mimic that amount of games played, and then there's going to be one or two guys actually going for the MVP race, and we'll pay attention to those guys. It so, may both so who, be on the Rockets. So who do you think it is? I'm AD. A- Anthony you think Davis, Anthony Davis? Anthony Davis is 26 years old. You think LeBron, they're going to give an LeBron MVP James, to Anthony Davis? I think he'll take it. James I think team? he'll take it. I think LeBron is going to focus. Just how Westbrook focused in on trying to have Paul George win MVP last year, I think LeBron trying to get AD – convincing him that it was the right move to go to the Lakers, to play for the Lakers, to dominate. LeBron moving from the point guard, removing him away from the basket farther so Anthony Davis has more options to score. Yeah, I think with LeBron James' help, Anthony Davis will be the MVP next year. LeBron tried to give him his number. Why wouldn't he give him MVP? Yeah, we'll get to that later. That said, before we move on from this MVP conversation, can we just please, please, just please, please, please just give out the MVP at the end of the regular season? Please. Yes. Okay, just do it. As soon as the season is over... Put the whatever you guys do. I don't know how you vote. We'll ask for right. Broussard. All right. Put it in the voting <laughs> yes. machine. Yes. Okay. And then out comes the answer. Right. Give the MVP as soon as the season is over. However many days this is right. before the playoffs start, that's when you do it. We can discuss the amazing regular season that we just witnessed, how excited we are for the playoffs. Yes. We can celebrate the person who won MVP. It's not going to matter. They're going to be in the playoffs. They're not going to care, just like they don't care when we all know who it is. Anyway, so just give it away. Dragging it out until the end of June is nonsense. It completely eliminates the fun and the buzz of it because we all already know who it's going to go to. And then we all act surprised Mm -hmm. at the awards. Mm -hmm. They're still going to give an amazing speech. They're still going to appreciate the award. The only difference is they're not going to be dragged through the conversation of, well, their team didn't win the championship, so it's a really the MVP. Yes, because it's a regular season award. So I have a solution, okay? Obviously, A, and everyone's on board with that, right? Like, we all agree the MVP needs to be given out at the regular season. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay, we're done. Moving on. We make the rules. That's what you need to do. The second thing is, if it bothers you so much that you have to give out an award at the NBA Awards that you feel like everyone doesn't know who it is, give out a a playoff award. The best player in the playoffs. And it Mm. doesn't have to be the person who won a championship. Mm -hmm. For example, Kevin Durant could have easily won the best player in the playoffs award. That's not what we're going to call it because that is a terrible name. But we'll figure out whatever the name is for it Mm -hmm. and give it to that person. Make it a fan vote. And then you can vote you can vote on that at the end of the playoffs. Or before the final start, whenever you want to. And then give that at the NBA Awards. And people won't know who that is. That'll be exciting. It's a prestigious award. It's all about being clutch and performing in the big moments. I, I mean, at this point in time, the people who have MVP, NBA MVP votes are in the media, and we hear them say their vote over and over and over again, right. and it's a collection. So you know who it is. We actually, know who's actually, winning. I, I've, not, I've now sorted through it. Give it right before the NBA Finals start, because... Then you're gonna mm. di- you'll diminish the NBA Finals MVP, right? Yes. So give it right or just vote on it, yes. not give it, but vote on it right before the finals right. start. So then that whatever happens in the finals doesn't influence the vote. I think ideally that it's not because they they want it to be someone who's currently still playing and deep into the playoffs. So that's a distraction. Like I'm trying to think of why they don't do it at all. Like they do it because they want to announce it at the awards, which is silly. It makes no sense. You can okay. still have the awards. You can still just have the awards. Tweet it. You can just tweet it, <laughs> it when just, the regular season give it a, give, it like, it's anyways. Just as soon as it's done, let us know. Do a playoff MVP award before the finals start so you still have the finals MVP. It's just more awards. It's great. Everyone yeah. loves more awards, yeah. right? Fix it's great. It. I just fixed it for you. Yeah. Just please stop it. Hear ye, hear ye. People who hate millennials are petty. Okay, mm. we get it. All right, we're millennials. We're all right, and I personally don't feel like I am a millennial because, you know, I believe in the old school, like hard work and interning. And, um, you know, money, right? getting, no, yes. I did not make any money for any no, of the internships no, 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 that I ever had. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's wonderful from a white guy. that we've evolved Intern for money, right? into a society that pays interns. Cause that didn't, I didn't, that, that thought never even crossed my mind that that was even a possibility. I didn't even have paperwork for most of the internships I did. Um, so anyway, the, right. point, the point is, no um, I, I, I do like avocados cause they're delicious and they're healthy. Amen. And so there's other things that I like that millennials, um, do, you know, like we care about our environment yes. we care about other people we support the disenfranchised yes um, I guess I can't speak for all of us at this mm-hmm. point since we're quite divided at the moment but yep. um, we do we do also agree on some weird food items so there's yeah. this thing circulating the inter- internet Internets. how millennial are you and mm-hmm. there's a there's a score it's like one through five is canceled uh six through ten we well, can just put it up why am i showing you this um <laughs> six through ten is basic 11 through 15 is yes almost millennial which is millennial as f- 
Right. And then, uh, well, coincidentally, 16 plus is millennial goals. As <laughs> so that's the rating system. Uh, how many points did you get? So like, let me read real quickly what they are. Yes. Avocado toast, charcoal water, rainbow bagel, unicorn frap, cronut, black ice cream, ramen burger, mermaid toast, bone broth, like random weird stuff. Right. Like some of the stuff I've never, I, I don't know what bone broth is. What's you bone broth? You don't have broth? bone broth? I've had bone broth? broth. Bone broth is a super food. Um... Is it, I got the I right. I thought quinoa was going, a super food. Than, I was just gonna say real fancy, expensive chicken soup. I love chicken noodle it is, soup. But it's like it's like drinking oil. It's supposed to be like like ultimate fish, the ultimate fish oil pill. Oh. Like in like a drink. It's kind of like a. For I need to start taking fish like oil. That, yeah. My joints are getting very bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm surprised there's no kale nonsense on here. Yeah, that's interesting. Right? They probably, they probably, like, I guess they lumped it in with the green juice item. Yeah, anyway, so I had fifteen. So um, yes, almost millennial. Yes. Like there's some things on here I just don't even like uh, turmeric latte or turmeric. I don't know how to say it, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. latte, I'm not trying that. I don't need a spicy latte. Um, I'm not interested in that. I also don't believe in waffles. <laughs> like pancakes are just better. It's, it's so. a waffle sandwich. It, it's the thing that's getting you away from why you don't like waffles. Like imagine the bread of a waffle with your favorite. But I don't sandwich like the, items. I don't like between. the texture of the waffle. That's fair. Yeah, that's that's the main part. So it yeah. doesn't. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. only gonna eat a waffle if it's chicken and waffles. Otherwise, I'm having pancakes. The waffle sandwiches I've had usually have fried chicken in between, just to be fair. Or are they millennial? Like, is a waffle like that was the only thing on the list that was like that, that's not specific that's to millennials. That's not the only that's thing. Almond Midwest butters, millennials almond like, butters on the list. Yeah, which almond is butter crazy. makes no sense to rose's me. Rose's on the list. Oak milk. Yeah, people have oak been milk, drinking rose for a long time. Yeah. It just uh, what it really should be is like a rose, a uh, frozen rose. Rose. Because rose is the. Sh- Yes. Hey, if we could keep that only for millennials, I'm cool with that. Y'all, y'all don't need yeah. to know nothing about it. Froze really, sneak like, up on you, okay? You know what I'm saying? Froze. Oh, my God. Froze's are so good. Jeez Louise. So good. Anyways. Anyway, what was your uh, score? Uh, I had 17. I'm a true millennial. Millennial okay. goes AF. Like, I, I went through the things. I was like, I, I was like, well, La- La- LaCroix is on here. Yeah, well, I mean, I ninety percent of my body was made up of Lacroix at one point. At one point, exactly. And yeah. I saw you, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't know, but sushi burrito may be my f- favorite like item on. I've this never list. had a sushi burrito. So good. Oh, so good. Okay, so what was your high, what was your score, Heller? Because you are you you drink things out of a mason jar, so for sure, uh, willingly too. Uh, I'd say twenty, maybe twenty one. I can't remember if I had a cronut or not. Okay, I have definitely had a cronut with ice cream. Um, but, and the, Ashley? but the best score by far is Ashley's. Ashley, Ashley you want to tell them about it? Yes. Yeah, well, Ashley had a 29. Give, but there's but more. She, give, give her, she give lives her. in down. Well, I should, I guess I shouldn't. Well, you already said you live in downtown. Yeah, that's she true. lives in downtown Los Angeles. It's a big place. Very big place. Yeah. Um, I'm not worried. Downtown Los Angeles is very, very, very hipster and trendy. Yes. This, yeah, yeah, like all those spots are there. And also, so you're, spots. A victim, you're a victim of your environment, is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I enjoyed that so much. Um, okay, anyway, so that's how we were. So it gave us inspiration yes. to create our own list. Is that the answer you yes. wanted, right? Um, we walked right into it. I knew you would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's it. a, are you crazy list? So are you yes. millennial or how millennial are you? This is how crazy are you? These are all things that are associated with me. <laughs> yes. um, the name of the podcast is Maybe I'm Crazy. Mm-hmm. So we are going to put this out there on the internets for you guys to, to get your get your rating of how how crazy you are, as if I am the parameter of what crazy is. Now, I think I'm perfectly normal and everything I do makes sense, which also probably makes me crazy. Um, that, uh, that's, but yeah, that's evidence. Um, so we'll yeah. just put this list. If you if we can put the list up there too, um, so I don't hold it because nobody can read it if I hold it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so you do, do your little rating and share it with us, and let's find out how many of you uh, crazies out there yeah, are. How many, how many crazy. are crazy like Joy? Yeah. Are you Joy crazy? I, I need to know what all of your ratings are, actually. No, I'm, I can't wait to go through. I'm a, I got we got to get the the updated ones, and then then I'm gonna start collecting. Okay, so the ratings, the rankings are uh, one through five is your sane, mm-hmm. which in my opinion is the complete opposite, obviously. Uh, <laughs> six through ten, you got takes. 11 through 15, you're, yeah, you're kind of crazy. And then 16 plus is you're, you're crazy as f- like me. Um, so we went around the room yes. and just did a quick rating. Heller is 18, so he's crazy as f- yes. otherwise known as a woke. They just <laughs> functioning. Dolphins fan, um, woke. Donnie has nine, so he's got takes. John Hill is 15, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but on on the edge, just tinkering more towards the crazy end. Right. Um, and Jeremy has thirteen. What is your number? I, I land right at eleven. I land right at okay. eleven on so the. Okay, you're like kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm clearly not sane. Like crazy junior. Right. Yes. Yeah. All right. So let us let us know what your 
<laughs> let us know what your your uh, crazy ranking is. Um, so hit us up uh, at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. It'll be on there and on Twitter and Instagram mm-hmm. and such. It's time for Hockey Loki. Hockey. Yeah. Lo- 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 Loki. Loki. I don't know. It's, it's always awful. Like, I haven't been Loki. It's, I it's such a good name, and we butcher it. Maybe we just say like High Key Loki and just try not cool. Yeah. So High Key, the aliens are here, and Low Key, you guys should go rescue them. I'm here for it. So as I discussed earlier, um, the, the Area 51. Okay, so we all know about Area 51, right? Like yes. Area 51 is where they keep the aliens. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Allegedly, it's a government Allegedly thing. Yes, keep the aliens. Keep okay. some stuff. Now, in all fairness. I don't think there's aliens there because why would they keep the aliens where everybody knows the aliens are? They're clearly in another place in the middle of nowhere land that we wouldn't think that they would be and probably very, very far underground. So yes. that's that's my uh, educated assumption. OK, yes. I know nothing about where the aliens are being kept. We don't know anything. Well, OK, so there's a Netflix special on Bob Lazar, who mm-hmm. is a. An American American conspiracy theorist and self-proclaimed physicist. Okay, that is on his Wikipedia page. Yes. that is also notes provided by Ashley, who is a doubter of the alien species. Right. And the internet is trying to, as a, the government as a whole, they're is trying, trying to throw to, dirt on his name. Yes. Okay, they're yes. trying to minimalize the yes. things he said that right. turned out to be true that I learned from watching this documentary. Okay, so I'm going to watch right. the documentary. Now, to be clear, I believe in aliens because mm-hmm. I'm not a narcissist. Amen. And the the reason that I say that is because if you think that humans and i want you to think about yourself and the things you've done in your life and then i want you to think about other humans in general if you think humans are the only intelligent life in the whole universe not just not just our planet like right. the other planets in this so this galaxy right not to get all nerdville on you mm-hmm. but like the universe you understand the universe contains other galaxies galaxies are big things there's Vast. other ones okay whole universe we're the only creatures right now a better argument would be like of course there's other creatures just why the hell would they want to come here that's a better argument okay and i love planet earth i try and save it all the time and all my peoples but i'm just saying there's other there's other ones out there all right right? okay they may not look like they do in the movies but you know they're they're there maybe they do and there's a couple of them and the government has them as they should i want the government to have them right okay so Anyway, there was this Netflix special, and September 20th has become the designated day for, mm-hmm. that people are going to rally and go to Area 51. Storm. Storm is the Area word. 51. Storm. It is all over the internet. They're going to go get the aliens, yes. which then, of course, um, all of my, my funny fellows and ladies on Twitter <laughs> decided to share the things that they would do with their alien, which I really appreciated because that was a good yes. five minutes of my life Thank that you. I enjoyed. Right. Um, that said, I very I would very much like to meet an alien, you know, if the government has them. I right. feel like I could do a good interview. Like a meet and greet. Right. Sure. Ooh, yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah, feel like interview. popcorn, you know, right. everybody loves popcorn. Yeah. That's one thing everyone can agree on, right? Like, we don't agree on much anymore. Like, everyone in this room likes popcorn, right? Yeah. Okay. There yeah. we go. I want to disagree so bad just because someone needs to. But, <laughs> but I like the sweet kind. I like it. Yeah, you know kettle. I mean? Like, yeah. I can disagree on the types of popcorn, right. but I think basic popcorn, everyone agrees it's on. It's like it. food fidgeting. Right. It is. It's just, it's just a great snack. It's the greatest yes. snack ever, probably, if you really think about it. So, <laughs> we'll have some popcorn and discuss alien things. That said, please don't go and try and storm a government um, facility <laughs> right, because yes. the thing is, they'll shoot you on site, and they have every right to because there's big signs and the big fences yes. and the the you know the barbed wire and the electric mm-hmm. and the sign. It very they give you fair warning that invading <laughs> this space will result in your imminent death. By the so way, I don't want to encourage people to do that, but I do think we should find the aliens and rescue them in a safer way. Live stream, please. Whatever you guys do when you head down there. September 20th. You Maybe know, we just go ask, you know, if, ask. We can, if we can meet one of them. Mm-mm. If they kill you with alien weapons, though, in a sense, you're a martyr for the cause because you proved that we have alien technology. I think they're going to use... I think they're gonna use you think they're guns gonna are use, sufficient? Probably they're going to use earth weapons. Yeah. 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 Somebody yeah. said you can't, they can't shoot all of us and like, they can. Yeah. They can. That's incorrect. So please yeah. don't go storm any government facility. Yeah. I'm not advocating for that. But shout out to the aliens if they're listening. Hey. We're going to man. Oh my God. All right. So, high key, 
I, I, I hate anonymous GM quotes. High key, I hate yes. them. But low key, they're really good for the business because they give us content. So yeah, they make the show. Um, it's the end of the year, so now they're 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 talking mm-hmm. the anonymous GMs, and they told Rick Buecher, our very own Rick Buecher, um, they had some opinions about Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson's who, who's Clay Thompson's kind of like popcorn. We can all agree on it, right? <laughs> Except for this anonymous so. GM, this this weird person doesn't like Clay Thompson. He says my or, minority owners with the Warriors floated the idea of seeing if Clay might give the team a hometown discount. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, this guy's funny too. Um, but abandoned it over fear, he jumped to the Clippers or the Lakers. Um, his media shyness and stoic locker room presence also leave a few max salary boxes unchecked. Quote, he's a good player, but he's not a leader. He just shows up in hoops. Uh, I'm trying to see, I'm looking for the problem, it, right. but I don't see it. Probably my glasses. <laughs> so I don't understand. What's the problem? First of all, Clay Thompson is, uh, like like I said, he's like popcorn. Everyone agrees Clay right. Thompson would be great on any team That's in it. the NBA. Yes. Without question, he is no drama. As he clearly said, he just shows up in hoops. He's really good at the hooping part. Mm -hmm. He is crucial in big moments. He plays both sides of the court. And he can shoot the three. Where's the the problem? What do you mean leader? First of all, everybody can't be the leader. That's the point of having a leader. Like, what do you mean? Like, sometimes you just need guys who are good locker room guys, who are, like, good friends and don't talk a lot and don't need all the credit. Like, everybody can't be the leader. You can't have too much of the same thing. Isn't that what the issue was with Kevin Durant and Steph Mm. Curry there? Like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I would truly like for the identity to be revealed of the person who feels like their team would not not benefit from right. having Clay Thompson Sounds like on their team. This guy doesn't like Kawhi Leonard either. Also, um, those well, those, it, those it, the well same... it might be the same person. It might not. We can't. Com- we can't, cannot confirm That's or deny. We That's have true. to ask uh, Rick Buecher. Maybe he'll tell us. He probably won't because then he would burn his source. But right. the point is, also, I just want to give a shout out to the minority owners who thought Clay Thompson was going to take less money. It's so funny. <laughs> probably the dude that shoved so Kyle much, Lowry. Dude, so get out of here. Like, get out of here, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Why do you take less money? It's not a thing. It's such a good joke. I'm comfortable with the it's fake laughter. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Oh my gosh. Silliness. Oh. should have taken less and went to the Lakers. What is it? Why? And then also he said, or this person, we don't have the same person, right. um, said about Kawhi, one Western Conference GM stopped short of describing him as a leader because of his sphinx-like demeanor. I would I would love to be described as Sphinx like demeanor. Yeah. And his limited playmaking ability. Kawhi is great at getting his, but doesn't elevate anyone. He doesn't rally his team. Okay, so there's a lot to pick apart here, but I'm gonna keep it short. Um the playmaking ability could be associated with his assists and passing, which of all the critiques you can make of Kawhi Leonard's game, which is basically one, he doesn't have a lot of assists. Okay, so I guess that's what he's talking about there. Um, He doesn't elevate anyone. Well, he just carried an entire team to the championship, the first in the Raptors history. Yeah, (laughs) thank you for correcting me. An entire land to a championship. (laughs) So that's just patently absurd. He doesn't rally his team. It's interesting. But, again, I don't care because Kyle Lowry was the vocal leader of that team, and everyone knows that. Mm. And you can say what you want about Kyle Lowry's game, but you can't say he's not a good leader and not a good teammate and not a great representation of the Toronto Raptors because he is. Yes. So you don't need everybody to be that. You only need one person to be that. And the best they, one. Yes. Like, it doesn't have to be the best player, oh, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Kawhi Leonard yeah, was yeah. the best player. Well, yeah. doesn't have to be. It just has. He just has to be respected. It doesn't even have to be the guy. Like sometimes it's the leader on the team is is a guy like a veteran that's been there. Like it, the, uh, nobody gets to decide that just because you're the superstar, you're also the leader. That's an incredible asset to right, have. Right. Like everybody's not LeBron James. No. No, My, like Michael, Michael Jordan Rogers. wasn't always the best teammate. No. He punched Steve Kerr in the face. Yes, he probably has. That's for not it. a nice thing to do to your friends. Mm-hmm. Okay, like uh, I may or may not have done that before, but like the point is, is you don't, you don't, you don't do that yeah. in general if that's how you want to keep relationships. Well, and and really I love MJ. He's the greatest player of all time. But yeah. the, every intangible doesn't have to match up to in order to equal greatness and winning. It's just. Like, huh? Oh, so this is a guy that didn't need Kawhi either? Which which one of the teams, the NBA teams, was that? It sounds like Daryl Moore. Well, that's false. <laughs> that is false. Loser power rankings. Loser power rankings. Loser of the week. Okay. 
we've been over this many times, but y'all gotta stop fat shaming people. Mm. First of all, people out here trying to live their best life, all right? Yes, and you should try it too, okay? (laughs) I I can't remember who posted it, but someone posted it the other day. Life is not about being skinny, and that's true. It's not. I don't. I I I do not subscribe to the idea of being skinny. It's too much work, and I like bread too much. Yes. Um. Actually, I don't really really eat that much bread, but bagels. And other carbs. So, and lots of cheese. Although cheese doesn't affect me. So, in general, I just eat what I want, and then my body does what it wants with it. But anyway, the point is, Zion's getting fat shamed. Yes, he is. And it's kind of ridiculous. Coach K had something to say about it. Um, Barkley said that he needed to lose some weight, that he's, I mean, he basically he's playing around 280. In general, Zion is going to have to watch his weight and his body, because he's a big guy, and he is plays with a lot of power right. and torque. And we know that's what his game is. Yes, and his spring gravity is on his back every time he lands. Yes, yes. and he lands hard because mm-hmm. it's a it's a lot. And it's we saw his weight. shoe explode. So yes. <laughs> there's there's I'm no question. Yes, mm-hmm. there's no question about this whatsoever. I've never seen that in my life. I'm sure it's happened, but that was dramatic for all right. of us. Okay, and especially for Zion. But you are not a trained uh, nutritionist, okay, or trainer. And even if you are a trained trainer, I guarantee you're not the type of trainer that's going to train Zion Williamson. That's for sure. Yes. Okay, so. There's like three great trainers, great, great, great trainers in the whole world, if we're just keeping it all the way 100 right now, Mm -hmm. all right? And Zion's going to have one of them, and he's going to have a great nutritionist, and he's not going to be out eating food at random New Orleans stops every single day, okay? I love New Orleans food. Blue crab beignets Mm. ain't nothing like it in the world, okay? There's nothing like New Orleans food. It's delicious. Best Bloody Marys you ever find. Best Bloody Marys ever. Okay, everything here is great. Mm -hmm. Okay, everything. But... That's not what Zion's there for. He's not there for your weekend party in New Orleans, all right? He's not getting hurricanes at the no. corner bar. Like, that's not what he's there to do. Yeah. So stop comparing your lives. You're not Zion Williamson. Well, it's you silly on nonsense. vacation compared to Zion yeah, like, well, living in How's Zion going to be on the There's no way he's going to make it through this. Yeah, that that drink that's this big, that's that much sugar and juice and 2% right. tequila, like, you're not drunk. You, you're you sick. Right. That's what it is, okay? That's the point of that. It's not the same thing. He's going to be fine. He is aware of his body. He'll be all right. It's going to be fine. Also, why are you fat shaming Jason Momoa? Mm, the dead body. He has, he's on vacation, too. That was him on vacation. Okay, just so you guys know, mm-hmm. I know this is going to be breaking news, but... The Marvel characters in the movie, they don't just walk around life looking like that. No. They go through very strenuous training regimens and nutritionists yes. of the Marvel level. Yes. Okay, so that they can look like superheroes. Yes. Do you know why superheroes look like superheroes? Because they're not real. I'm glad there you we, go. Glad there you we go. established also, that. Also, uh, DC is Aquaman. Just one of the Aquaman's DC. DC oh Aquaman. God, whatever. Just to, uh, thank, thank you. For, thank you for, for out nerding me. Nerd friends. Thank you for out nerding me. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> anyway, superhero guy. So okay. So LeBron and AD. Remember they were going to switch jerseys. That yes. whole thing happened. Well, that got canceled. Uh oh. Um, yeah. All right. We'll just go over this really quickly. So the NBA notified the Lakers that there was a March 15th deadline for jersey changes, and mm-hmm. it would it had passed, and it w- they would waive it for them to switch jerseys if Nike complied. And Nike said that the unused inventory uh, inventory of the LeBron James number 23 jerseys had already been produced, and it would have been a financial hit well into the tens of millions. So that got canceled, and of course. And now, look, I'm not going to point the blame at anybody because it's really not that big of a deal at the end of the day. It's just kind of, like, embarrassing. But... Um, everyone was like freaking out and it was like LeBron James fault and like then they were mad at the league and then they're like mad at Nike for like mm, no like there's a reason why Nike's a billion dollar company and it's because they don't eat tens of millions of dollars in jerseys yeah. because LeBron and AD want to swap jersey numbers that's not how it works and I, in general like I don't I try to not be like all adulty and factual about stuff but like yes. that's how it works like you buy a bunch of product and you sell it for like you get good margins because you buy more of it like yes. that's, that's how it works mm-hmm. so it's a very simple process someone forgot to ask nike before they told lebron it was okay to change the jersey that's basically probably what happens i feel like you should have went through that extra step before you announced it it's all good Somebody we're all should've. gonna have the same jersey yeah. um just all the theories that i had about him wearing number six are, are no more anyway. <laughs> And finally, um, so the Sixers and Ben Simmons. So Ben Simmons and Philadelphia agreed to a five-year, $170 million contract extension. Great for Ben Simmons. I love when players get paid. I have no problem with that. My issue with the Sixers is I don't understand. I don't understand what they're doing. Like, I don't I don't get how the, the way the team is set up, just the thing. So he doesn't. We all know Ben Simmons can't shoot. Like, that's not even, that's not even not like yet. a joke anymore. Not yet. 
Right now he can't. That's fair to say. We don't even know if when he does shoot, if it's going to be left-handed or right-handed yet. There's a lot of questions with the very fundamental thing that you have to do in basketball, which is shoot the basketball. Imagine how good he is at everything else, though. He is really good at everything else, which is why he's so good at everything else but shooting that Mm -hmm. they gave him a five-year on a $70 million contract. Which is insane if he could actually manage to get his shot together, what kind of player he would be. But Mm -hmm. it's not even really about Ben Simmons because they know that he can't shoot. I'm not an NBA scout. I'm not revealing that to anyone. Everyone knows that. It's very easy to see. But why are you building your team the way that you are with non-not shooters when you're just you're paying Ben Simmons, he doesn't have the lane. Joel Embiid, massive, massive, yeah. massive guy, yeah. is in the lane. I don't get what the Sixers are doing. I'm with Colin on this. It's very confusing. And I don't. I just. I know everyone just keeps bringing up the Sixers when it comes to the conversation in the East this year. Um, looking forward, but I'm not. I've not bought into that yet. I know the process is dead, though. Yeah, it's another process to start. No, 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 there's no more processes. You no can't, process? Nope, we can't over-process something. <laughs> we, it's, it's gone to the over-processing stage. It's no longer usable. <laughs> okay. All right, what's in the Migos Culture Report this week? Stranger Things 3 came out uh, the weekend of July 4th. We've given Crazy Gang plenty of time to watch it if they're going to. Yeah. Binge much. watch it. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, we're going to spoil it right yes. now. So if you haven't seen Stranger Things, just literally, we're gonna, scrub a little bit forward. We, and a, <laughs> we, went, we went deep in the production meeting about all the things about it, but I wanted yeah. to break it down to one big pro, one big pon, uh, con okay. for each season. Go ahead. Um, one big pro for the season was I very much enjoyed it. I thought that they, like, this, I was compelled every yes. single week. Mm-hmm. The one, and the, I, and I thought the ending was great. Like, I, I think they could have ended the series on it. That's how good the last yes. episode was. Yes. Uh, which is rare. Mm-hmm. The one con that I have with it is I wish that they would have let Billy's character, like, just be Billy for a little bit longer. I know he was a like irritating yes. in the last season but yes. we needed to like reconnect to him as like a human person before right. the mind flare took him yeah. over like it happens so fast and then once the mind flare takes you over you can't really be mad at them anymore because like it's not them right you know what i mean and he's, yeah. so that was my that was my one critique and a deep dive creatively for me i like well my pro was they finally found the right villain for us to care about because Billy was kind of weird and he was like mean to the kids but we also didn't know what to be mad at last second season the first season was Papa and Elle's dad and like nobody really cared about that and Mm -hmm. also yeah Will being like good and bad was was like weird or whatever but just making it Billy making it the one guy giving him a voice with out of Billy's Billy's mouth yeah we can we can digest. Yeah, that. I'm very good. You know I'm mean? very on on it with the with right. the one very Just centralized villain. Yeah, um, and, and then, the Russians, of course. Yeah. Oh yeah. Obviously the Russians. I know. As a as a whole, we've kind of forgotten the Russians are the enemy. Yes, and they reminded us. Thank yeah, they you. did. Yes. Thank you for that political you slip. Watch forty five. You trying to try to lull us asleep? We you know woke. What I'm we woke out here. Thank you, Stranger Things. All right, um, what's the con? And then the con was I feel like the guys that I fell in love with at first, like all of them together, just spend too much time apart. We feel like we got like. An hour total of everybody in the same room. Yeah, you know I can what I mean? feel like, that. That was my only kind of qualm to the whole thing, but I did enjoy everyone kind of finding themselves in L and Max. Love that gang. Yeah, gang, it was a coming of age story. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and they they gave up Dungeons and Dragons, so it's like it was realistically, but realistically now they might as well turn this thing to Save by the Bell. Like we can watch them in high school. What's well, I'm saying? I think it's college, no. I think I think I, I, I personally would be fully content with that being the last season. As oh, much yeah, as I love sure. it, I, I I liked the ending so much, I would be comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay, what else is up? Um, Bond, we finally have a personal person of color slotted to star in a James Bond film, and it's not Idris Elba. How do you say his last name? Idris Elba. Elba. Okay. Anyways, uh, basically, James Bond franchise continue with Bond 25. In this film, 007, played by Daniel Craig, is going to retirement, but he's replaced by a character played by Lashana Lynch, who's Captain Marvel's best friend in Captain Marvel. Uh, she's supposed to come in and be the new James Bond, but at the end of the movie, I guess this is all rumors. Well, she's playing. She's gonna play 007. 007. So the agent 007 is agent gonna be played 007, by her. Yes. But she's also supposed to be his love interest. So they're trying to be wokish, like back not, in the Holly Berry I did days. Not know that. And that, yes. that changes everything. But yeah, also, also this movie. What about, about work life separation? Y'all? Why, well, Daniel, why do they have to? Have, the, why they're gonna do, they have to have do the whole movie like that, and then Daniel Craig is supposed to come back out of retirement to beat. Uh, the guy who played uh, Freddie Mercury in um, in 
Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be back. So like, it's it's just really just a placeholder. Interesting. But we're supposed to be. Well, it's, we'll, it's, follow, we'll follow the story. But shout out James Bond is trying it. to be diverse. Yes. Yeah. Which we appreciate. All right. Thanks for joining us this week. Thank you to TJ Hushmanzada for stopping hey. by. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube. Maybe I'm Crazy Podcast. Um, follow Brandon Newman Show 99 on everything. Yes. Joy Taylor Talks. Yes. At Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. Mm-hmm. And check out the update with Brandon Newsman yep. on Friday. Mm-hmm. Make sure you subscribe so you can check that out and get it first. We are on Apple Podcasts, we are on YouTube, we are on SoundCloud, we are on Spotify, and we are on iHeartMedia. Yes. Um, so thanks for joining us. I'm going to catch you next week. Bye. Maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm not. Ooh.